Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, dear ladies and gentlemen, um, I'm honored having the opportunity to give you an overview of a real world case on the topic of flexible job shop scheduling, which I worked on together with Victoria Hauder. So I want to give you a brief overview of this topic in the next couple of minutes. The goal of the work uh, is to realize automated, optimized production planning to support production scheduling, which is the time and resource allocation of orders at an automotive supplier producing injection molded components such as oil dipsticks or electronic housings. The motivation of the work is the critical planning environment at the company partner, which is comprised of an extensive and complex production planning tasks, which means that a lot of orders have to be scheduled on several resources, also having interdependencies between the orders and also the order allocation to the resources. As the production planning or scheduling task is done manually, um, high effort um, is the result um, because all those tasks have to be scheduled, um, which, which results in this high planning effort. The planning task is getting even more critical when looking at the future development in terms of the demand situation, um, which is facing uh, increasingly diversified product portfolios. Um, we can see at the chart on the right of the slide a study done by the Fraunhofer Institute, um, which shows that the estimated development of the offered number of physical variants by OEMs, so original equipment manufacturers, automotive manufacturers, and tier one suppliers within the next five years will for most of the companies, um, which is precisely more than 70% of them, um, at least slightly increase. Going into detail <clears throat> concerning the practical problem statement at the company partner, we can see that the main focus is on orders. Orders are comprised of several activities within a sequential order, which means that for each order, we have one dedicated end activity. All the activities have a specific processing time. On an hourly timeline, we have release dates and deadlines given in between which an order has to be scheduled. Additionally, resources exist um, in order to process the activities. The resources are of a renewable nature, so they are available after every time step again. Um, looking at the activities that are processed uh, on one and the same resource, um, setup times have to be considered between those activities. Um, in terms of activities that are to be processed on two different resources, time lags exist, which specify um, a minimum time distance between the start um, of two activities. In order to ensure a better illustration of the pr pl practical planning problem, um, a toy instance uh, was developed. We can see the toy instance data set on the top uh, of the slide in, in the two tables. We can see that orders exist being comprised of one or more activities. And for each activity, we have a specific processing time a release date, a deadline, and one or more alternative resources. Additionally, we have a changeover matrix which contains all the sequence-dependent setup times between the different work activities. As the toy instance data set is, as you can see on the slide, quite small, uh, it can be solved uh, to an optimum schedule manually, which has been done, and we can see the toy instance optimum solution at the bottom of the slide. Um, showing all the activity processing times in green, the changeover times in blue. And we also can see that uh, not only real work steps for processing products are considered, but also a maintenance work step. Looking at one exemplary uh, order, A13 here in that case, we can see that it is comprised of three activities with all the necessary data given, which I already mentioned before. Um, looking uh, at the order being scheduled in the optimum solution, we can see that the work steps have been 
scheduled in the sequential order given. Uh, and we can also see um, that a change over time, so a setup time between the maintenance work step um, is considered, in that case, two hours, um, which is necessary in order to get um, the, the order A13 running and being produced. Based on the problem description, which we just went through, um, a formal problem classification could be done. Um, for which the widely known alpha, beta, gamma three field notation has been used. Following this notation, uh, we can see that the practical planning problem um, is situated in a flexible job shop environment. Looking at the restrictions, we have release dates, precedence constraints, sequence dependent setup times, machine eligibility restrictions, as well as breakdowns. Looking at the objective function, a total completion time minimization is present. Based on the problem definition, also the problem classification, um, a formal integer programming model was developed. However, this integer programming model showed a very bad performance. So it uh, was very hard to find optimum solutions, um, which led to the development of a constraint programming solution approach, which we Go, on which we will go into detail on the next slide. The constraint programming solution approach uses three decision variables. Two of them, operations I and modes M, being interval variables, and one of them, machines R, being a sequence variable. The sequence variable, machines R, ensures that the interval variable, modes M, um, is scheduled in an order on all the resources R which means that uh, all the orders which are represented by modes M are uh, specified in a sequential order on each of the resources R. Looking at the model formulations, um, we can see that the first condition, which is the objective function, is the total completion time minimization, which is given out of the practical problem statement. With conditions two, three, and four, uh, precedence constraints are modeled, um, ensuring the temporal relationships between the start and end times um, of activities within one order. Restrictions five and six um, represent temporal constraints, um, which means that the release dates and the deadlines um, are incorporated into the model. With uh, constraint seven, uh, alternative modes are ensured which means that um, for each of the activities, one or more resources on which the activity can be processed exist. Um, and also that exactly one of these alternative modes or alternative resources has to be selected for every activity. Um, finally, with condition eight, the capacity restriction um, is given, which means that each resource is only capable of carrying out one activity at a time. Additionally, the sequence dependent setup times are incorporated into the model with condition eight. Having um, all these um, formulations here, these conditions, um, we can say that this is the newly composed model formulation which was developed during this work um, and which is named flexible job shop scheduling model considering release dates, deadlines, and sequence dependent setup times. Having developed the constant programming solution approach, computational experiments could be conducted. And those experiments uh, were conducted using two data instances. First of them being the toy instance, which we already um, had a look at during the problem classific problem description. Um, the toy instance is the, represents the planning volume of one working week, um, which means that on an hourly basis, 108 time steps are given. Additionally, eight activities, five end activities, nine modes, five resources, and the setup time matrix of eight times eight um, is given in the toy instance. Additionally, an enterprise instance was developed, um, which includes the planning volume of the company partner in the day-to-day -day practice, um, and again on the hourly timeline of one week. Therefore, we have 51 activities, 30 end, end activities, 58 modes, 30 resources, and a setup time matrix 
of 51 times 51. Um, we can see that the enterprise instance due to the planning volume in practice is approximately six times the size, so the number of orders and the number of resources uh, compared to the toy instance. The computational specific, uh, experiments will have been have taken place uh, on a personal computer with an Intel Core i5 CPU with 2.3 gigahertz, two cores, four logical processors, and eight gigabyte RAM. As an operating system, Windows 10 Pro was used. Um, the commercial solver IBM iLog CPLEX Optimization Studio in the version 12.10.0.0 has been used uh, as a software tool to conduct the computational experiments. Looking at the optimization results, uh, which were uh, done for both integer programming and constraint programming, um, we can see um, that for both instances, the toy instance and as well as the enterprise instance, um, the results are given in the table at the bottom of the slide. Starting with integer programming, we can see that for the toy instance, an optimum solution of 196 could be obtained after approximately 840 seconds. Compared to that, with constraint programming, the optimum solution could be obtained after just 0 0.04 seconds, which shows already a huge gap in between um, the two approaches. Um, the performance gap between the two programming approaches um, is becoming even more evident when we look at the enterprise instance, where with integer program, programming, um, an optimum solution, so not even a solution, was able to be found after the given uh, time frame of one hour, which is also set out of practice by the company partner. However, with constraint programming, an optimum solution of 1,454 could already be obtained after just 12 seconds, which shows the really high performance of the constraint programming solution approach, um, which has been developed. To conclude um, the results of this work, an integer programming model, as well as a constraint programming solution approach have been developed. The constraint programming programming model has been tested on the two data instances, the toy instance and the enterprise instance, and could be validated as a feasible scheduling tool for our company partner due to the exact solution and the high performance in finding those exact solutions. Um, with that in hand in hand, um, there come some benefits which are expected um, in terms of increased output quality, reduced planning effort, as well as higher data consistency. Looking at further research opportunities, benchmarks may be generated for the purpose of a more extensive testing of the developed model. Furthermore, stochastic factors could be incorporated into the model uh, in order to also integrate um, uncertainty factors um, of any kind into the, uh, into the model. Uh, when it comes to the industrial tool implementation, efforts have to be made in terms of change management in order to allow for a sustainable implementation of the new production, production scheduling process um, using the developed scheduling tool based on the CP, um, based on the CP model. Um, therefore, all the relevant aspects in terms of change management, which are human aspects, technological aspects, as well as organizational as aspects, have to be taken into account. Finally, I may thank you as the audience for your interest in the topic, everybody who contributed to this work um, for their valuable inputs. And I also want to gratefully acknowledge um, the support of our comp company partner, Freudenberg Sealing Technologies Austria, uh, which um, ensured that the quality and also the practical relation of this work. I'm now open to any questions or feedback you may have. Thank you very much, Philip, uh, for this interesting talk. And uh, again, a, a very practical and real world application. Uh, there's a question that 